Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to go over relative versus absolute file paths that can affect your web page. And I promise you, this is going to affect everybody at some point as they're learning web development and they're making their first web pages. And I still mess up too. Um, I often like if I'm linking to an external CSS file, I might forget to put the folder in there. So. So let's figure out how we can just get used to this. Now I've got a blank page set up that I'm going to be working with here in this demo. And if I look at my VS code, I'm going to keep my folder panel open here. There's a lot going on. So I am working on a web page called filepaths.html and that that file is stored in a CIS195 folder. And that folder is part of a parent folder, the root folder, which is my 95.dev site folder. Okay, now there's other folders in there too. There's a CIS133.js for JavaScript. There's a CIS295 folder in there. There's a separate images folder. And I have an images folder in my 195 folder. So there are you know easily four or five folders. And those folders have some other folders in there along with files. The more folders you have in your website structure, the more complicated it gets when you want to link from files within your website. There are a couple techniques to make your life easier, but it is more complex. Probably the easiest thing to do is to put every single web page you make and every single image you use all in one single folder and every CSS file you use all in one big folder. All the files will be all mixed in there, but in the end result, nobody really cares because the customers aren't viewing where your folder paths are. So we want to find the nice combination between being organized with folders, but not so overly organized where we're making dozens of folders. To test this out, I'm just going to go grab an image and I'm going to jump out to the web. I'm going to head on over to unsplash.com and I'm going to grab a picture of the yellow backpack within the tree. I don't know what that means, but it looks pretty neat. I'm going to click on this picture to get a large version of it. I'm going to go to my download drop down and I'm going to get a small. Okay, where am I going to save this to? Well, I want to save it somewhere within my main website working folder. I don't want to put it in my desktop. I don't want to put it in my normal images folder for Windows. It does need to be within the realm or within the domain of my website. And for me, that's under Google Drive, CCC Docs, Demo Files, 95 Dev. Okay. So if I put my image anywhere within my website folder, I can make it work. However, if I know that I'm going to be using this image with a web page that I have within my 195 folder, well, let me go in there. 195, and I have an images folder. I could just put it right here in the body of it, or I could go right into the images folder that I have created. I'll go into my images folder, and I've already got a picture in there, but I'll add another one. I'm going to rename it down here just with the word yellow, so it's really obvious. Okay, I'm going to save that. Image has been saved. I'm going to close out of there, back to my page, and then to the code for this page. Let's go ahead and get this image displayed. I'm going to put this in the body section right in here. I'll go ahead and create a figure tag. Within that figure tag, I'm going to do image source equals. Hmm, where do I go from here? Now, VS Code is trying to help me out. As soon as I started to do those quotation marks for my source, it's prompting me with my choices that are within my current folder. Remember, I'm currently in my CIS195 folder working on a web page within that folder. Now, of course, I'm not going to do an image source to another HTML file. I'm going to click on my images folder. I have two choices, woman white background or yellow. I'm going to click on yellow and there's my path right there. I'm just going to do an empty alt. So this is the path that I would use to display an image that's within a subfolder of my current location. And that's what's going on. I'm on my web page. There's a subfolder called images. So I just type in images slash and then the name of that image file. Let's head on over to my page and there's my image right there. It's pretty big, but that's okay. Now, if I make a mistake, if I just said yellow.jpg, well then my image isn't gonna work because I'm indicating that my image is in the same location, the same folder as my web page. And that's not true. My image is in a subfolder. 
for that web page. Make sense? Okay. Well, let's try something else. I'm going to go to my file manager real quick. Let's bring this over here so you can see it. I'll go to my Google Drive, and um, there it is. My docs, my demos, my 95 dev. I'm going to go to my 195 folder, and then to my images folder, and there's that yellow picture. I'm going to click it once. I'm going to control X to cut it. And I'm going to stick it somewhere else. I'm going to put it right up here in the root folder. This is the main folder where my home page is. I'll just right click and paste. So now my yellow.jpg is not in a subfolder of my 195 folder. It's now in a parent folder higher up in the tree. Okay, so what am I going to do here? Well, the image doesn't work anymore. So what I need to do is head back to my code. And what I'm going to do after the quotations, or for the quotations for source, dot dot slash. That takes me up one level. And do I see my yellow picture? There it is right there. Yellow.jpg. So dot dot slash goes upward into the folder tree and finds that yellow picture. And the picture shows back up on my page. Very, very cool. Here's something else I could have done in this situation. Instead of starting with dot dot slash, I could have just started with slash. And that's still going to work sometimes. When you lead off with a slash, that means leading off from the root folder. You'll see a lot of professional websites do that. In fact, I'm doing it right up here where I start with a leading slash. That means from the root, from the parent going downward. And that's kind of a good way to always ensure that I'm going to be getting that, that picture. So yellow.jpg is going to show up that way too. This would not work if I wasn't published or if I wasn't using a live server right now, which I am. If you were just making and testing your pages locally, this method won't work for you. So you need to be aware of where the file is in relation to the main web page that you're working on. Is it in the same folder? Is it in a subfolder? Or is it in a parent folder? Now, I also want to give you a quick demonstration of using an absolute path. Oh, by the way, these were all relative paths because these paths are in relation to my current web page, hence relative. An absolute path is going to be an absolute address. If I were to head back over here and click on this picture, I think if I right click and open image and new tab, this may work. Okay, there's a big long path up here. I'm going to copy that. So it's a big long web address. I'm going to head back to my code. And in the quotes, I'm going to paste. And it's probably not exactly what I want. I was hoping to go directly to a JPG, so I don't think that's going to work out for me. Ooh, however, it looks like it did. Okay, so this is an absolute path, and it's literally right there. I've got the HTTPS. However, this is called hot linking. This is not a good way to go for an image because if Unsplash changes this photo out or removes it or deletes it, my web page is going to be affected by that. So you don't want to hot link an image like this. Also, this puts a hit on the on the image source server, and that's kind of unfair. You're hitting somebody else's server, yet your website is getting the benefit of it. So using an absolute path for an image may not be the best way to go. However, if you were going to link to a completely different website, so if I was going to do a hyperlink to unsplash.com, then it's perfectly appropriate for me to use an absolute path. So you can use an absolute path to a website or a web page, and that will help ensure. And that's what you have to do if you want to link from your web, a web page in your website to a completely different website. If I'm linking from my web page and my site to another page in my site, then I would use a relative path similar to how I was using those images before. Absolute and relative paths. And I'll give you a quick example of that. Copy, paste. I'm going to link to another page here. Let's see. I've got another page called corona.html. And there we go. So I have one link that's using an absolute path going to a completely different website. 
then I have another link that's going to another page within my own folder, within my own website. So I just had to put in that web page file name. Let's see how that looks on my page. Scroll down. The links are really tiny, so you're gonna have to trust me there. But if I click on the link for Unsplash, it's gonna take me to the Unsplash page for that image. Let me go back. And if I click on the page for Corona, that one's gonna work and it's gonna take me to another page within my site for, for that page. And I'll click back. So there you go. It can be tricky, I promise you it's gonna be tricky and mistakes will be made, but if something doesn't work, if a link doesn't work or if an image doesn't load, one of the first things I want you to check out is your file path. Did you use relative or did you use absolute? Both could work depending, but for your relative path, did you actually get the proper path for that file, whether it's a web page or an image? So practice with this one and thanks for hanging out with me.